NES games that were also on the Sega Genesis, or maybe it's these are Genesis games that were also on the NES. Believe it or not, over 35 games were on both consoles. Basically the same, maybe a few things added or removed uh, to, to make it fit the system anyway. Yeah, they had an Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle game on the NES and the Sega Genesis, but there are two different games, really. That's the same with Strider. Same name, different games. Toki, the NES. Toki was the arcade version. The Genesis version was its own thing. There's some games like Tecmo Cup or Tecmo World Cup. Well, on the NES, it was like this soccer RPG, while on the Sega Genesis, it was an actual soccer game or football if you want to be proper. The Adams Family, very similar, but still not exactly the same game. And that's the same as Joe and Mac too. Joe and Mac did the best they could on the NES, but still it wasn't that same 16-bit game that we saw on the Sega Genesis. But still it's just, you know, the best they could do for an NES. Uh, this one isn't exactly, exactly the same, but it's close enough to be the same that I wanted to show you case, uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. This is the Ubisoft version. There's two Indiana Jones and the Last Crusades on the NES, one from Taito. Uh, this is the Ubisoft version, which doesn't look great. It, lo it looks like it's an upgrade from a Game Gear version or <laughs> Game Boy Color version or something thing. Looks the same, kind of, but plays on an NES. This is a real game, by the way. And they have a very similar structured game of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade on the Sega Genesis, which, believe it or not, looks better and kind of feels a little bit better. I mean, it's funny, you have your whip as your secondary weapon. You only have so many whips you can do uh, before you run out of whips and you can't whip anymore. It's like, how does... What? It, no, it's not, it's not a biodegradable whip. There's games like Double Dragon 3. The Genesis version was more closer to the arcade version, and the NES version was just an NES version of Double Dragon 3. You know, something like Star Trek The Next Generation. Pretty similar, but not exactly the same. Robocop 3. I mean... Robocop 3. And also in this video, I'm just talking about US games. So like, yes, there was a Japanese Famicom version of Altered Beast that we never got. And same with Wardner, or Pyros, depending on where you're coming from. Wardner, they made a version on the Famicom Disk System. And also, a quick shout-out for any of the game show games, like Wheel of Fortune, like Jeopardy, like Family Feud. But what about the games that were pretty much the same game on the NES as well as the Genesis? Well, we're going to cover all of those, uh, about 30 games or so. Thank you for subscribing. We're almost at 200,000 subscribers. Going to do a big old giveaway when we get there. Alien 3 for the NES, well, it gets a bad rap. A lot of people don't really care for this version of it. I think it's okay. It's not great, but it's certainly not as bad as a lot of people make it out to be. I think it's pretty cool. I always liked it when video games, you never saw the bullets. It just made the reference that you shot a gun and it made a sound or something, uh, but you don't see the bullets because it's flying too fast. I like when they do that. And you also have other weapons you can choose from this game too, and you're still you know, defeating the aliens, saving the hostages. When you play it for the Sega Genesis, you're gonna get a you know better graphics, of course, you know better resolution. You got that third button to choose from. That's always gonna help you out as well. And I think the Sega Genesis version, as much as I like the NES version, I think the Sega Genesis version is just a better experience uh, all around. So for this one, I'd give it to the Sega Genesis version as my preferred way of playing Alien Three. Hey, what about Arch Rivals? You ever play this one? Now, I thought this was kind of cool because it was the start of a, hey, let's make a game like basketball, a game that everyone knows, and step it up a little bit. It's the 90s. It was all about attitude. So in this game, you can actually, like, punch people in the face <laughs> and stuff like that. I'm, I'm not great at this game. I always had fun playing it, though. So I'm just kind of showing you some gameplay footage. This is the NES version. And then we move on to the Sega Genesis version. And the Sega Genesis version, well, more the same. You're going to get the better animation, especially like in the cutscenes and stuff like that, too. The same premise, same idea, you know, even the same characters in this game, too. Yeah, good old Arch Rivals. A basketball game, two on two, but you got the option to punch people in the face. And maybe it's because we had games like Arch Rivals that we ended up getting games like NBA Jam. I'm not exactly sure. It's fun. I don't know if I have a preference one way or another. The NES version, the Genesis version, they're both pretty good. I think I, I played more of the NES version, but the Genesis version one's great. Battletoads, yeah. Did you know they had Battletoads on the Sega Genesis? Well, of course you played the NES one. That was one of the most popular NES games, especially when it first came out in 91. Great music, great sound. It had a, you know, the comic book style thing. Introducing new characters, new IPs from Rare. Gotta love it. And the big cartoon over the top you know, uh, animations when you can, you know, kick things or headbutt things, <laughs> things like that too. Oh, I got the big bosses in this game as well. Um, it's just fun to see, and you know, creative, unique bosses, I should say. Battletoads for the NES, it is a classic. It's the one that, and it's no reason why people still talk about it today. And then you can play it for the Sega Genesis as well, and the Sega Genesis version plays 
pretty well. It plays pretty well. I, I think I still prefer the NES version. Uh, it looks great, sounds great, same music and everything too, so it's nice to see, like, oh, it, if they would have just upped it up just a little bit, if the, if the Nintendo was just a little bit better, what would it look like? Yeah, it might look something like this. The hit detection doesn't seem pre as precise as the NES version. The hit detection, especially on this boss, like, I swear I'm hitting him, but it's not registering that I'm actually hitting him. It's almost like we had the NES game, and then they sent it to someone else to make the Genesis version of their NES game, or something like that. I'm not exactly sure how to describe it, but it's, it's good. It's, it's really, really good, and definitely worth checking out. Uh, just uh, it, not as tight as the NES one. And with that, you also get Battletoads Double Dragon, the ultimate team. This is a Battletoads Double Dragon crossover. Do not get it twisted, do not be fooled. This is a Battletoads side story game. It's an extra Battletoads game. The fact that it has the Double Dragon guys in it, that's completely secondary. This is not a Double Dragon game, this is a Battletoads game. Me personally, you know what, I would have preferred a Double Dragon game where you can play as the Battletoads. We never saw that. But we got this, and it was a fun idea for its time. It's like, oh my god, a crossover in video game history? What? And with this game, again, they both play pretty much exactly the same way when it comes to how to defeat the enemies, what to do with the stages. Ah, it's just basically the same game, depending on what platform you're playing it on. You're going to get basically the same experience, whether you have it on the NES or the Sega Genesis, or even the Super Nintendo, but we can, we'll can we do a Super Nintendo comparison video later. I don't have a preference one way or another on this one. I, I actually played the Super Nintendo more than both of these, but I had the NES one. That's certainly the collectible one, right? Best of the Best was a fun game because it was not only just like, you know, a decent kickboxing game with fluid animation motion, almost like, you know, like realistic things. Like you can actually pull off the moves that these people are doing with training. But you can also choose which moves you want to have. It was one of the first games I remember playing where it had kind of like an edit feature where you could create your own character in a way. The best you can anyway, especially on an NES. Much better on the Sega Genesis in my opinion uh, because it has, it just looks better, looks more laid out. You can actually change the heads on this one. Seems like it has a lot more uh, kicking and punching type moves uh, as well uh, when you're creating your own character when it comes to uh, the actual fight. And the actual fight itself, I mean, it's it's pretty straightforward, really. You just hold the button down in a different direction will give you a different thing. Like, this could have been Karate Champ 2. It could have been. It could have evolved into this. Eh, it didn't. Uh, but, but here you go. Um, better in 16-bit form, but the NES version, it's plays still uh, really well. California games. Well, I mean, I guess we could have included California games like the game show games where it's like, it's kind of the same on every system. I mean, they made this on the Atari 2600 and it doesn't really matter because I'm not good at literally any of them. I never, I mean, I could look at the instructions and find out what to do. It was a thing for the time. It was a thing for the time with the NES version and the Sega Genesis version. Very good. Very well. It's fine. It's just California games. You know, I've never been the biggest fan. I played a ton of it on the Atari 2600 though, of all things. Cyberball was cool. I remember playing this at our local Red Robin in Yakima, Washington. They had Cyberball there for years, that little back arcade in the old location. It was fun because it was a nice way to say, hey, you've already seen football games. Well, here's football, but with robots. And the ball itself is like a hot potato that just gets warmer and warmer and hotter and hotter uh, the more you play this game, too. So kind of a fun spin on it. Uh, but a lot of people really, really liked this game. And that's that's got to be OK, too. The NES version plays fine. Uh, the Genesis version, in my opinion, I just think just plays better. Uh, it's just a little bit smoother, I think. But Cyberball, definitely available on the NES, as well as the Sega Genesis, uh, depending on which console you had. Ready, set, on. Oh, there's the Great Waldo Search. Well, this game uh, earned a one star in Pat Contry's uh, guide, both for NES and Super Nintendo. I don't think it's that bad. I still play it every once in a while, like on a Twitch stream every once in a while, just for fun. And the NES version, I mean, it's not great because I, you can find Waldo pretty easily, even on like the difficult levels, but still it's something to look at and just a thing to have. Waldo was red hot, super popular for the time. It had the cartoon and everything. May as well have a video game based on it too. The Genesis version I think does play better uh, because there's also extra things you can do with speech. Like sometimes you'll hit a clock or you hit something and there'll be a clue, like just on that one screen. That was the thing with the Res Waldo books. You look for Waldo, and then you also got to find the scroll, or the girl, or the staff, or the wizard, or the something else. Uh, in these great Waldo search games, you look for Waldo, and you look for the scroll. 
And then sometimes the screen will pause because there's other stuff happening um, in the back of the books. They'd be like, hey, on this page, look for these five things, look for these 10 things. Where it's like, you know, like you, you find a guy wearing his suit backwards or whatever. Um, and in this game, the Genesis version, it will speak to you. It'll actually have speech saying, look for this. Two headed stamp. And you click on it and you get some extra points that way too. Genesis version of Great Waldo Search, pretty fun. And I don't think it's that bad. It's just its own thing. Oh, The Immortal was a game we all wanted to play on the NES. It used those tricks to make the darks darker, which also used to freak out my CRT at the time and make it go all wobbly and stuff. But just the animation, the creepy vibe you get from this game, the weird deaths you get from this game, uh, it just looked deep, it looked dark, it looked cool, it just looked grungy. Like you could smell it. I mean, it was crazy. You have these little character fights too, and you have to like, you know, slash your sword to dodge the guy. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Uh, I never beat this game for the NES, but I certainly played it a lot. I thought it was pretty cool. And the Genesis version, if you haven't played it yet, even better. More fluid animation, better sounds, better graphics, I think. Um, and they get away with a little bit more when it comes to the gruesomeness, when it comes to the ugh-ness. Uh, you might might get a little bit more uh, out of your immortal experience <laughs> when you play this on the Sega Genesis. The Jungle Book, that's right. Well, uh, the NES version, uh, man, someone did themselves proud with the animation on this one. It just looks clean, looks great. I remember this being a later release NES game and thinking to myself, man, I wish this game would have come out years earlier before we had all these 16-bit consoles to play from now because uh, this game looks great as an NES game, and it, and it plays pretty well too. It plays pretty well too. And the Genesis version, more the same, it just plays pretty well, same great animation and everything like that too. Uh, music, of course, is fantastic. The Disney games on Sega Genesis are all generally very, very good. <laughs> <laughs> generally very very good in, in my opinion so uh, de definitely check out the Jungle Book games those, those are pretty fun even though I typically just do licensed NES games Tengen gets a pass because Tengen was one of those like yeah we know it's not Nintendo proper Nintendo but the Tengen games made their way into more people's collections than any other unlicensed game so Clax is definitely worth talking about because Clax is a great puzzle game. It's really, really fun. It was unique and fun for its time. You know, everyone was trying to do a Tetris clone. And I mean, they just kind of did their own puzzle game. You see the tile pieces falling down. You got to stack them up three in a row across down or diagonal. You can also push the tiles back up the way if you don't want to hold on to them. And you just have like different things to go through with, with the game. And the Genesis version, again, uh, the great thing with puzzle games is puzzle game is all about gameplay. Graphics don't matter. Sound doesn't matter. All these, all the, just as so long as the puzzles are fun, that's all that matters. And Clax is definitely worth playing every once in a while. I'll still pop it in uh, sometimes. I get pretty frustrated with it a lot of times, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, but I do like playing some Clax every once in a while. Played it more on the NES, plays fine on the Genesis. And that's the same for Lemmings. Uh, Lemmings, good lord, Lemmings uh, came out of nowhere and was on everything in a few moments. I mean, it was a PC game, and I knew it best from being a PC game, and I was like, wait, it's coming to consoles? How do you do that without a mouse and all that? Well, you can use the, the D-pad, the cursor, hold buttons down to select which Lemming you want to do. Uh, if you're not exactly familiar with Lemmings, and it's, it's about time for a Lemmings reboot, in my opinion, uh, you assign the different Lemmings different tasks, like different jobs, and that's what helps you get to the door. Uh, so that some of them can dig, some of them can burrow a tunnel, some of them can float. Uh, it depends on how many you have and how many lemmings there are. And uh, sometimes it just, you know, you just do what you can for, <laughs> for, for the situation. And the NES one, the Genesis one, they both play fantastically. And they're still a lot of fun to play today. The, the first Lemmings is the best Lemmings, and I would, I would, yes, there are other iterations later on, but I, I, I still just still prefer the first one here too. And I, I admittedly didn't even play it a whole lot for the Sega Genesis. I did play it on the Super Nintendo as well as the NES. Genesis version plays fine. That's right, Marble Madness, a classic in the arcade with the trackball, and then on the NES, uh, which is fun to see how many times the ball could fall and the different animations that would give the ball, the marble, uh, to shatter, to get dissolved in acid, to be eaten, to this, that, or the other. 
Um, one of those games is difficult to, uh, I mean, easy to pick up and play, but difficult to master. And if you can go through this game on the NES, more power to, I've never been able to beat it. I've never been able to beat it. Not, not in the time limit they gave me anyway. This game plays amazingly well on the Sega Genesis. I think it flows better. I think it's smoother. I think uh, the controls are more responsive than on an NES D-pad. Now, I, I know a lot of people are used to the NES version, but if you're used to the NES version and you rock it and you do pretty well at the NES version and you've never played the Genesis version, check out the Genesis version sometime. Uh, you might be pleasantly surprised. Um, I, think, I think it plays really, really well. We'll do another Tengen game. This is nice because this is Tengen, uh, again, on both, with Miss Pac-Man. Now, the Miss Pac-Man version of Tengen, what was basically a mod of Pac-Man became one of the highest grossing arcade games um, and made it kind of like universal too. I remember seeing uh, not not just girls playing Miss Pac-Man, um, but everyone would play Miss Pac-Man. Grown ups, I remember seeing I remember seeing old men. Sega Genesis, this title screen will haunt your dreams, and you will have a great time with Miss Pac-Man on the Sega Genesis. Believe it or not, I prefer the NES version because it looks more like the arcade version. The Genesis version looks like hey, it's Miss Pac-Man Deluxe. You know, Miss Pac-Man 16-bit. You didn't need to do that. You didn't need to do that. Just, I mean, and they were still discovering things too. They're still figuring things out. I think later on they just realized, wait, they, they want to play the arcade experience at home. They don't need it all updated and it's fancy. And the, the nice thing is you can choose to have like the, your speed boosts and stuff like that too, if that's how you like playing this Pac-Man. So a few options on that one. Great to have at home. Sid Meier's Pirates coming to the NES was a godsend. This game is absolutely amazing. It's so deep. It's so in-depth. You can do so much with this game and a very, very, very good port of what they could do for the NES. Like Maniac Mansion, I didn't think pirates would be able to ever be able to make it to the uh, to a home console because it was just it was too deep. It was too much in depth. But they made it work on the NES and it worked out very very well with uh, with how they set it up that way. With you know, you had to talk to people, recruit your pirates. This is before Pirates of the Caribbean and all that other fandom stuff. This is what we had for for pirate lore, I suppose. You leave town, you're in your boat, you know, you look out for other people, you know, you fight them or not. Um, the huge world to explore. You can find maps and stuff like that to find buried treasure and fight other pirates and you recruit them and steal their stuff and everything. And then on the Sega Genesis, they called it Pirate's Gold, one of the absolute best Sega Genesis games, in my opinion. Easily a top five Sega Genesis game uh, in my book, anyway. I haven't written a book yet, but maybe I will. In fact, I'll just, I'll just title the book my top five Sega Genesis games, and it'll be a it'll be, it'll be an easy read. <laughs> Less pages for me to write, anyway. No, I wouldn't do that. Uh, but Pirates Gold is uh, Pirates Gold is absolutely fantastic. More the same, and then some. I'm telling you, uh, it plays so well. Both versions play extremely well. The Sega Genesis version, that's one a uh, little bit closer to my heart. Uh, definitely check out the Sega Genesis version of Pirates Gold, me matey. Paperboy, because a podcast subscription would be an incredibly difficult game to play. <laughs> this is back when people deliver the news. Now, I still live in a town that still heavily relies on a newspaper. So newspapers aren't dead yet. And they're not dead yet either in a Paperboy. I used to have a paper route. I had a paper route when I was 12 years old. As I was able to buy my own Sega Genesis. That's yeah, old I am. Anyway, they <laughs> they had uh, a fun game uh, by premise. You just deliver the papers. You chuck newspapers into the houses that don't. And uh, if you do a perfect score, then you'll get more and more subscribers. And on the Sega Genesis, uh, more of the same too. It looks better on the Sega Genesis. Again, I played the NES version more, but the Genesis version just plays better. It just is better in every aspect. So if you're a huge fan of Paperboy but haven't checked it out on the Genesis, might want to do that. Paperboy 2, same idea too. Paperboy 2 um, was a game they didn't necessarily need, but I'm glad it came out. It was kind of cool because it gave you both sides of the street. So one side you'd be shucking papers to the left, and then maybe after a while you'd be shucking papers to the right of the street after you cross the street and stuff like that too. So it gave you, it gave you a new option and to give you a new angle and all that. And it worked great for the uh, Genesis as well. Absolutely fantastic for the Sega Genesis. So if you're playing Paperboy, uh, and Paperboy 2 rather, and you can also play as a, a girl. You can, be, you can be a paper girl if you'd like. I mean, why not? Absolutely. Sega Genesis version plays excellently. You should check it out. Rampart was a game I put a lot 
of time and effort into. I put a lot of hours playing Rampart, both one player and two player. Two player is even more fun, uh, but even the one player versus the boats, that's fine too. You build your castle, you have your cannons, and you have to bomb the other uh, things before they get to you. And then you have to fix your cannon walls. Now it has to be a perfect, perfectly all the way around, no cracks or anything for you to get your land back. And you can also try to circle around other castles to get that land as well, to give you more, more cannons to shoot out at more boats and stuff like that. And the NES version plays great. The Genesis version also plays great. It's the same idea. I mean, again, if you have great gameplay and a great idea and design, you do not need to have the best graphics. You just have to have it all set up and and good, <laughs> right? And, and the Genesis version plays very, very well as well. I played more on the NES. Genesis version plays wonderfully. Both of them are great. RC Pro-Am? They made an RC Pro-Am for the Sega Genesis? Well, hold on just a second. First of all, RC Pro-Am by Rare. Great racing game. Instead of using real cars, it uses RC cars to kind of, you know, maybe eliminate the whole driving in real life or something. You can use missiles and stuff <laughs> like later on too. Uh, around the tracks you go and, uh, and what a fun game with RC Pro-Am. It is an NES classic. On the Sega Genesis, it came out as Championship Pro-Am. Championship Pro-Am. Same music, same graphics style, same idea, and same going around the tracks and doing what you need to do. The NES version, it's hard to top because the NES version was king of the roost for, I mean, it was the game that everyone had or wanted to play or whatever. Um, and Championship Pro on the Sega Genesis, it plays super, super well. I'm so glad this came out for the Sega Genesis. And it'd be awesome if you checked it out too, especially if you're a huge RC Pro-Am fan. It's one of the best, I love it. I played me a whole ton of Road Blasters in the uh, arcade. Uh, we had uh, Road Blasters uh, down the street from our house, I think at the Tiger Mart on uh, 24th and Nob Hill in Yakima. And I, I played me a whole lot of Road Blasters. It was fun to see. You have the three different options you can, which road you want to go to, and each one would give you a different uh, special item to use. This to me was like, this could have been uh, Spy Hunter 2. This could have been like the next Spy Hunter, but behind the scene of the car and you get your little upgrades with your guns or sometimes it's like a speed boost or something like that too. Super, super fun game on the NES and then the Genesis version uh, was just a little bit better. The Genesis version was more like the arcade as far as the sound goes, the graphics go. This was pretty much, uh, it, was, it was as clean of a port as I could possibly see from the arcade version to an at-home console. And they didn't do this for the Super Nintendo, but they did it for the Sega Genesis, and I'm so glad they did. Uh, this is the optimal way to play Road Blasters, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, we got a Koei game on the list, watch out. Romance of the Three Kingdoms 2. I never have a clue what I'm doing with any of these Romance of the Three Kingdoms games, but you can see from the gameplay footage of what the NES version looks like, kind of how it goes, kind of how it works, what's going on. It's When I see stuff like this, I'm like, why well, don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing? It came out for the Sega Genesis as well. That's the Sega Genesis version of Romance of the Three Kingdoms 2, a lot less expensive for you than the NES version, I'll tell you that. And it looks to be the same. I still don't know what I'm doing, but it looks to be the same and I'm happy about that. Side Pocket is an interesting situation where you play it on the NES and it's pool. It's not bad. It's pool. You're, you're shooting some stick and you know, you're, just, you're playing Side Pocket. You build up your meter, you aim your ball, you, you shoot your shot and there you go. Well, the Genesis version is a little more sleek a little bit more sexy, a little bit more, what's that word I'm looking for? A little bit more, what's that other word I'm looking for? Well, when you get to the actual gameplay part of it, it's more of the same, but it does give you a little bit extra graphical stuffs <laughs> to, 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 to feast your eyes on in the meantime with your Sega Genesis uh, Persuasion Proclamation. Oh, The Simpsons. This is a great example of a game that and we all played on the NES, but maybe not a lot of people knew that it came out for the Sega Genesis uh, because we had to force ourselves to like this game because it wasn't great, uh, but it was The Simpsons. So we had to show our support by playing a game on The Simpsons where, you know, you're trying to do these tasks and the running's kind of weird. Like you have to you have to hold the jump button to run. That's weird. Um, you know, select different items. The different stages have different things going on. Hide all the purple, you know, in the first stage and all that. Uh, bop on the heads of the, uh, the, the, the aliens by putting on your x-ray specs to see who's an alien and who isn't. 
Well, this is the NES version, but the Genesis version, I'm here to tell you, if you've never played the Genesis version, it just plays better. The controls are more tight, the controls are more precise, uh, you have the A, B, and C button, so instead of the start button being your third button, you just have like, you know, the other button between your items and your jump button and all that. Yeah, The Simpsons, Bart Simpson versus the Space Mutants. If you haven't done so yet, check it out on the Sega Genesis. It just plays better. Tecmo Super Bowl, an NES classic. Don't really need to talk much about Tecmo Super Bowl, it's an NES classic. But it also came out for the Sega Genesis. So if you had a Sega Genesis, you could play the 16-bit version of the NES classic. Yeah, Tecmo Super Bowl. Don't really need to go into much detail after that. Uncharted Waters! Oh no, another Koei game. Well, from what I understand from people who really, really like these games, that Uncharted Waters is the one to play. Like, if you, you can't figure out Bandit Kings of Ancient Boredom, and you're not really getting into Romance of the Yawn Kingdoms. Uncharted Waters is the one that you will have the best success with uh, figuring out how to play and how to play it and everything. And looks good on the NES, I'll give it that. You know, it looks like it could be doing something anyway. And then when you get to the Sega Genesis version, it looks like the same but better. So I've heard, that's, again, like I've heard, if you're into other games like that look like this, but the Koei games scare you because they all look like the board game Risk and you suck at Risk, <laughs> but you still want to check them out because they get because a lot of people really really like these games. They really like these games. Uh, the Uncharted Waters and maybe especially the one on the Sega Genesis is the one to check out. I don't have a clue what I'm doing, but I'll at least have fun not knowing what I'm doing. <laughs> Where the fuck? No, where in time is Carmen San Diego? Now this was a fun series. I always liked the Carmen San Diego games. Uh, they were built to teach you how to use an almanac. You probably know this already. Uh, in fact, the NES version of Where in Time in Carmen San Diego came with an almanac because it would give you clues on where to go, and you have to look at the almanac. Like, oh, who's this guy? Okay, I'll look him up in the book and then say, oh, he's he's from this place and he's from this time. And then you, that's how you can kind of you use your almanac. To, that's, that's what it was all about, man. That's what it was. Um, just like, you know, where in the world is Carmen in San Diego? Was it learning about geography? You know, it teaches you all about all that. And where in time, you know, teaches you a little bit, of, little bit about history as well. A little bit about history as well as, uh, you know, world stuff and everything. Uh, NES version plays wonderfully. And the Genesis version plays wonderfully. I don't, I don't have any complaints. Again, pretty simple layout as far as, you know, you have to, you have to talk to people, search for things. Uh, you get the clues on where to go. You also get clues on what the bad guy looks like. It's not always Carmen. Carmen San Diego is only one of them. Uh, Carmen San Diego is only one of them compared to all the other villains, but you kind of narrow down the villains to do descriptions and all that. And then once you have the information, then you can arrest them, but you have to catch up to them first and everything. So very, very, very cool game. I've always been a big fan of any of the series from uh, Where in the he No, Where in the Where in Time is Carmen San Diego. That's right. Yes, <laughs> Where in Time is Carmen San Diego. Nothing else. I know I've missed some games on this list, so let me know what were some other NES games that were also on the Sega Genesis. Let me know in the comments. And I also want to cover like NES games on the Super Nintendo, or maybe Genesis games on Super Nintendo and stuff like that. I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna look at more of those videos uh, as, as you know as soon as we can. There you go.